It's, it's the lifeline of our town. It's, it's the lifeblood. As the Milk River rushes around this bend, it's hard to fathom that the river that flooded much of the High Line this spring naturally runs dry more than half the time. This water means everything to the 1,200 people of Chinook. Everybody's aware that if we're out, we're out. The river has water between its banks because of the century-old Milk River project. The problem? At least $180 million in upgrades are needed so the system doesn't fail. We have to rely on the federal and the state governments to uh, get together to allow those extra dollars for infrastructure. Chinook Mayor Keith Hansen says the town relies 100% on the milk for its water, and without improvements, the fear of failure remains the forefront of his mind. Our town would fail. It, it just would. Businesses. Homes. It's the only thing that keeps our town going. All depend on this water. This whole project begins by diverting water from the St. Mary River near Glacier National Park. Then it's brought up into Canada, where it then connects with the Milk River, brought back down into Montana, stored in Fresno Reservoir. Then that water flows all the way across the High Line, serving more than 18,000 people and 700 farms and ranches. Hansen believes without the farmers and ranchers of the High Line, these communities wouldn't exist, and neither would exist without the Milk River. We got to have them. We all have to work together in this project. Out in the field, not too far outside Chinook, is where we find Chris Nemitz, a rancher and farmer trying to get by, relying on a project that was an idea of Teddy Roosevelt, giving ranchers the ability to have a livelihood that could not exist without the project. It would be bad shape. It would be dry and there just would be no revenue. The dam diverts water from the milk on private property and carries water from Loman to Harlem nearly 30 miles, a long distance for a project working on borrowed time. No, it might be a year, it could be 10 years, or who knows, but when it fails, it would be pretty catastrophic. 222 miles from Chinook, we'll end up here at the Lake Sherburn Dam where the entire Milk River project begins, and much of the money needed for improvements are for upgrades at the St. Mary facilities, and all of that starts right here. The dams, headworks, river siphons, coolie siphons, and drop structures, all authorized in 1903 by then Interior Secretary Ethan Allen Hitchcock. I mean, they did this with hand labor, horses, steam shovels. Paul Azevedo with the Department of Natural Resources and Conservation has spent much of his career on this project. It's really an amazing engineering feat done at the turn of the century that is still operating today. As he walks us through the system from start to finish, he details all of the repairs that are necessary. The canal needs to be redone. They have a lot of trouble with landslides along the canal. Pretty much needs to be redone from, from top to bottom. The Milk River project keeps getting patched up when it needs more than a Band-Aid. And without it, the High Line wouldn't have enough water to support itself. The drought of 2017, by the end of July, there was no natural flow in the Milk River. It had dried up. As water flows hundreds of miles, filling up reservoirs and trickling down irrigation canals, Azevedo, Nemitz, and Hansen all believe a new plan to fund the repairs needs to be developed. The irrigators simply can't pick up the bill on it. That's just not possible. If the project fails and the water stops flowing... I mean, the bank still needs paid. Uh... People have land leases, payments, and bills, and none of that stops just because the canals don't have any water. With the next crop season on the horizon and the head gates are opened, everyone who depends on this water believes this project is the lifeline of the High Line. It, it needs to quit being ignored. We just need to come up with the money and get it done. The economy, as we know the High Line today, could not exist. On the High Line, Mackenzie Frost, MTN News.